We're back on North Dakota today with a Try My Job, and Josh Selly is joining me. He is a probation officer here in Burley County in Bismarck, and this Try My Job is going to be a little bit different. More so than me trying to do the job of a parole officer, we're going to learn exactly what it is that a parole officer does and how they go about things on a day-to-day -day basis. Josh, thank you for taking the time to do this with us. Appreciate it. Thank you for it. coming out here. You've got a lengthy history in law enforcement. Is that a qualification of becoming a parole officer? Uh, no, it's not. Um, we require a four-year degree okay. kind of in law enforcement or behavioral health. So we have a mixture of law enforcement and people that have come from like a social services background, counseling background, those kinds of backgrounds that they all kind of fit together for our job. Okay, you've been doing this now for three years, you say? Correct, yeah. What have you found in those three years? What has been the most rewarding part of this position? Uh, when I was a cop, you know, you would arrest people or whatever, take them right. to jail, and just that was kind of the end of it, right? Uh, here, you kind of start to build relationships with some of these people, and you know, not everybody um, goes through, you know, completes probation right. successfully, right? Right. But the ones that do, you get to see them um, just progress and do well, and it's really nice to see them get off probation. It's nice to see them out in the community, and then they come up and say, "Hey, thanks for you know what you did to help me get through," and see where they're at at that point, you know. You've got this this paperwork here. So the first time, and we're going to talk, we're going to use me as an example here. The first time you meet with someone mm -hmm. and you go over their case and things like that, what is it that you would walk through with them to find out where they're at and what, what your role will be in their life? Well, I think well, the first thing, we, we talk. I just usually talk to somebody for a little bit, try to engage them, kind of just to see where they're at. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can't supervise anybody. I don't know what's going on in their life. So I try to build a little bit of rapport with them. Okay, when you say to see where they're at, what do you mean by that? What, what the crime was, why they're on parole, or where they're at in their life in Where general. they're at in their life in okay. general. Because no matter what crime people are on for, we really can't uh, treat them any differently. Okay. Right? So treat everybody the same, treat everybody with the same respect, right? Um, and so I just want to see where they're at in their life. Okay. You know, are they working? Do they have a house? Are they homeless? Do they have family sure. or like a good support system around? Those kinds of things. Because if they don't have some of those things, that's gonna be a bigger indicator that maybe they'll uh, commit new crimes again. Right. Um, you know, They're not just, accountable to anyone or anything, and it's easier to go off the wrong path. And they have those, they have those supports. You know, if you sure. have supports, if you have a job, you have a stable house, you've got a family that cares about you, you know, those kinds of things, you're going to be a lot less likely to maybe recommit a, a crime. Plus so. idle hands a lot of times. A <clears throat> yes, lot absolutely. of idle time is probably the biggest. I know for an addict, which I am, a mm -hmm. recovering addict, idle time is the worst thing you can have, and I would imagine that's for someone that's recovering or trying to get beyond a... a yeah you know, a past in, in, in law enforcement too. Yeah, we always try to, um, that's one of the biggest things is try to encourage them to find a job yeah. or a hobby or something like that because, you know, then, then they have gainful employment, they're keeping themselves busy, um, they might find a different social network of, of friends or whatever that's a better support than what they came from. Okay. There's a whole lot of reasons why. What would you and I do the very first time we meet? So we'd sit down, we would talk, like I said, we'd mm -hmm. build a little bit of rapport. I'd go over your case, I'd kind of tell you what I expect from probation. If you've been on it before, I'd ask you how it went, what went wrong, kind of gauge, you know, um, how you think it went. Are people honest with you most of the time? I would say a lot of times okay. in, in those situations. Okay. Yeah. And I always, like one of these, we'll get to it, but one of these conditions is, is about being truthful, and I try to really hit that home. Mm -hmm. So I can go through these if you'd like to. I, once I go through the case, and I say, we're going to go through your conditions of your probation. Okay. Okay. So, well, and, and what would be a typical thing? We, we want to get going so that we can get out to, to talk to the person on parole. But when you say your conditions of parole, what would be an example of that? So one is you cannot use or possess any type of firearm, destructive okay. device, or dangerous weapon. Okay. okay. That's number two on here. That's a big one. I always say... If that one is violated, there's a good chance that you're going to get rearrested and go Got in front it. of a judge. That's a big deal. That's yes. a big one. That's okay. public safety, and I think that's what a public expects us to keep them safe in that regard, right? When okay. there's weapons involved, those kinds of things. So that's where we have to put on the law enforcement hat sure. rather than the social work hat. Um, another one is you cannot use or uh, possess controlled substance, which not has mm -hmm. been prescribed to you, mm -hmm. or misuse any which have been prescribed to you. So that one, I say, you know, especially if they're on for like a drug offense or something sure, like that. Sure. I know that addiction's hard. I know that you're not perfect. We're both human. Pe people are going to make mistakes, right? So there's a chance that that's going to be violated. Sure. Okay? If you can be honest with me and come in, 
we're going to work through it. Got okay. it. Yep. You know, oh, being an open book sounds to me like that is such a huge part yes. of being successful. Yep. Because I don't know what to do for you when you're not honest. Exactly. Me, right. So if you can come in and be honest, I'm not going to take you to jail. If you come in and we do a UA and you're dirty for weed, I'm not taking you to jail today. Right. Okay. Um, we're going to work through it and we're going to come up with a plan. If you can have a plan that I think is a good plan, I'd rather you come up with the plan for yourself. Exactly, they may dictate it yes. to you as to what it should be. All right, before we run out of time, let's go visit with uh, someone that did, that you would meet with on a regular yep. basis. This is not a simulation, this is an actual parolee that we're gonna talk to. We're gonna do that now. All right, well, thanks for coming in again. How are things going for you? I, it's good, real good, honestly. Um, are you still at the same residence? Yep. Okay, and how are things going over there? Really well. Really well? Yeah. Are you still, have you moved up any? Have you no. changed rooms? No. Okay. I'm and still in this single, so. I'm sorry? I'm still in the single room. Okay, still in the single room. And what about people there? Are you getting along with everybody there, all your yeah. other roommates and everything? No big issues? No. Nope. Okay. All right, um, what else is going on? Um, so I'm in my last week of school for the summer. Um, so right now I have over 100 in statistics and I have over 100 in sociology. So I just have to get through this last week and then even if I got a zero out of 50 on the next um, math test, I would still pass with a B. Huh. Dude, I, I honestly can't, the 100 in statistics is kind of crazy to me because I know that a lot of people have problems with that. So that's that's awesome that you're doing well in school like that, so. Yeah, I'm what? also gonna get um, a recommendation from both of my professors to become a student tutor. Oh really, at yeah. the college? Yes sir. Okay, perfect. Um, so then what's, you have a couple weeks off, Yep. And then what's going to be next and do you know your classes? Um, I do. Um, I think I have an accounting class, uh, English class, uh, a few other classes, um, a commerce class. So you're going to have a whole lot of classes going on at once more than you do now? Yes, sir. Because it's what, uh, not summer? Right. Okay. And what about what about your job? How's that going? It's going really well. I've been working over 40 hours consistently every week. I've been in overtime anywhere between like 45. I think I had 45 last week, mm -hmm. 55 the week before, something like that. You've been there quite a while now. Yeah. It's the longest I've ever had a job. That's good. That's yeah. good. You're making a lot of money. So yeah. any big uh, events lately? Um, no, the biggest thing is that we don't have the staff that we normally do, mm -hmm. so I've been helping out and going into dish a lot. So this week will be my last week in dish, but I have four dishwashing shifts. Oh, okay. Yeah. And how do you like that compared to the serving? I can't stand it. <laughs> it reminds me, it reminds me of where I was though and yeah. where I don't mm -hmm. want to be. Uh -huh. So to keep my job and keep doing well so I don't end up washing yeah. dishes somewhere. Yeah, but I mean, you seem to make a lot of money in tips waiting, so you must be doing something well out there. Yeah, I had two I had two dishwashing shifts this week and um, three days, AKA six shifts, um, serving tables, and I've made like probably like 1,200 this week. That's awesome. Just in tips. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they are really appreciative that you're like kind of stepping into that other role and helping out with yeah, the dishwashing, for, right? for sure. So. And then um, I also like, we have comments because they have those little presto things on the table mm -hmm. and people do comments and surveys. And every single week I have like a third of all the servers oh, nice. good comments. That's good. Yeah. Do you get anything extra, any bonus or anything from that? No, but I think the tips are bonus enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fair enough. That is just part, I'm sure, of what you do. And, and we can only touch on so many things, but Josh, I want to thank you for your time on doing this and, and appreciate the work that you do. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming out. All right, that'll do it for Try My Job this week. We're taking a break. We're back. We've got more coming up on North Dakota Today right after this.